Hello. Welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave coming to you with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have a beautiful carol, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly, by David Cullen. David. Infant holy, infant lowly, for a bed of cattle stall. Oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the babe is Lord of all. Swift are ringing, angels singing, Noel's ringing, tidings bringing. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Christ the babe is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of the gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the babe was born for you. Christ the babe was born for you. Thank you, David. Let us pray. Merciful God, you come into our midst, longing for communion with us, becoming one of us. Break our resistance to life with you. Show us the path toward just relations, and bring us into your unimaginable peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue our reflection on the Christmas story in Luke. Once again, Luke chapter 2, 1 to 20. In those days... A decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. We were meant for each other, and that can be a problem. Families gather at Christmas. The promise of those events looms like clouds on our horizons. Fasten your seatbelts. We're in for stormy weather. We all know marriages apparently made in heaven sometimes end not far from hell. How is it that we ache for each other and yet find relationships so difficult? Relationships are another signpost in the midst that points us to somewhere we all long to go. We get these intimations of heaven, and yet we know we are far from arriving. Why is it, asks Henry Nowen, that many parties and friendly get-togethers leave us so empty and sad? Loneliness is one of the most universal sources of human suffering today. Advent is a time of longing, a time when we own up to what is incomplete in our lives. Our culture tells us it's the most wonderful time of the year, yet what we experience in our relationships is often anything but wonderful. Too often we feel empty, broken, and alone. The time of year when we should 
feel most connected leaves us feeling most disconnected. We try to hide from this darkness. We try to distract ourselves with tinsel and glitter. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But the harder we try, the emptier we feel. How can we be fulfilled? The core of the Christmas story is the story of how a family functions and dysfunctions. God's promise of relationship is fulfilled in the midst of a family's pain. Once again from Luke 2. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. We were meant for each other. It is not good for human beings to be alone. The birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, opens the door so that we don't have to be alone. We can come home for the holidays and be welcome. Mary and Joseph go home for the holidays. Joseph is of the house of David. Bethlehem is the city of David. So Joseph is not knocking on the doors of strangers. He's knocking on the doors of family. It's like a Hershey returning to Hershey or a Franklin to Philadelphia. So what's going on? We don't turn them away. We throw a parade. We stop the presses to report on this breaking news. Guess who's come to town? But there they are, knocking on a door in a place Joseph can call home. But he can't come in. What's going on? Oh, that's right. Uh, there's no room at the inn. This may be a polite way to save face while avoiding the consequences of being defiled by Mary's giving birth in our home. She's pregnant. They're not married. We don't want to get involved. Community breaks down. Or no room at the inn may mean that the sleeping area is full. We hear no room at the inn and we think, no vacancy. The Holiday Inn is full. But the word simply refers to the sleeping area in a first century cave dwelling. These cave homes had two levels, an upper level or shelf on which people slept, and a lower level where the animals were kept. In either case, there is an obstacle to the hospitality we would expect when we go home for the holidays. We expect to be greeted with joy. We expect our relationship to be as if we'd never been apart. We've been away, but now we're home for the holidays. That's the kind of relationship we long for at Christmas, but there are obstacles. Will Uncle Joe and Aunt Jane quarrel again because of his drinking? Will our sister storm off in a huff because we dared to discipline her precious darlings who can do no wrong? We've seen this family portrait complete with broken hearts, bruised egos, and battered psyches. Mary and Joseph knocked on closed doors. They were rejected by their families. They faced the crisis of a childbirth alone. The Holy Family was a family very much like ours. The promise of relationship was given when they went home for the holidays. Meanwhile, out on a nearby hill, the shepherds kept watch over their flocks by night. They were Bedouins, outsiders, wanderers. They were outcasts. They were not welcome. The shepherds represent the vast majority of humanity that works and lives on the margins of society. They represent, too, the lonely part of ourselves, the part of us that yearns to belong. These Bedouins are the first to hear the good news. These lonely, marginalized outsiders are the ones to whom the angel says, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And when these shepherds go to see the newborn Messiah, they are not turned away as Mary and Joseph were. They are not rejected and despised, because the child in the manger would be rejected and despised for us and for our salvation. They are welcomed. They are respected. And they leave transformed into heralds of God's good news. The welcome they have received turns them into a community of faith and sends them out with that word of welcome for the world. The shepherds remind me of another classic Christmas figure, my favorite, the Grinch. He's on a hilltop looking down. He's an outcast, an outsider. So he lashes out at the Who community by stealing their Christmas. But Christmas cannot be stolen. The morning comes and the community celebrates. And Dr. Seuss tells us, And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? 
It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. What if Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store? What if Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more? And this outsider is welcomed and allows himself to be welcomed. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. We are meant for each other. And the good news of Christmas is that this longing will be fulfilled. God has acted to overcome our estrangement and heal our loneliness. We can model that. We can demonstrate that in the way we welcome. We can point beyond the loneliness to God's promise of relationship. Dr. Seuss said it so well. Welcome Christmas. Bring your cheer. Cheer to all who's far and near. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clasp. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, I pray for uh, the families of those watching. I pray for the get-togethers and the celebrations that are planned. And Lord, you know all the dynamics. You know all the ways that when a family gathers, instead of it being a time to come together and be together and grow together and strengthen one another together, Lord, instead of that incredible gift, it can be a curse of division and dis diminishment and discouragement. So, Lord, I pray that you would help our families all to find healing this Christmas, to come together in peace. Help us, O oh Lord, to set aside disagreements about lesser things and celebrate the gift we have in one another. O oh Lord, we pray that this would truly be a wonderful and merry Christmas for all. By your grace, O oh God, may it be so. We ask this in the name of the one who came at Christmas, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go in hope, peace, and joy. Live in love, and seek to be holy in all that you do. May the God of mercy keep you, the Holy Spirit cheer you, and Christ in glory greet you now and at the day of his coming. Amen. Thanks for watching.